After the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix in Jeddah, Lewis Hamilton said that that Red Bull RB19 was the fastest car he's ever seen compared to its competitors. And this got me thinking, is he right? Well, I did the only thing you could do. I went and looked at the data and I went back and I ran through every single race in the past 10 years to compare the difference between the winning team and their nearest competitor. And the results are pretty interesting. Before we get into that, this is exactly what Lewis said. The RB19 is the fastest car I've seen compared to the rest. I've definitely never seen a car so fast. When we were fast, we weren't that fast. I don't know why or how, but Max came past me with serious speed. I didn't even bother to block because there was a massive speed difference. Yep. Now, in his defense, it seems as though he could have been talking about the straight line speed of the Red Bull rather than its outright pace over a lap. What we also know is that that Red Bull is incredibly efficient with its DRS, with the team gaining way more than any other team when their DRS flap is open. As well as this, they generally have a really well-balanced car with heaps of downforce that works at multiple tracks. So I thought it'd be interesting to look back at how it compares to the gaps we've had over the years, and it makes for some pretty interesting reading. So this is what I did. I went back over every season for the past 10 years, and some special ones as well, and my reference team was the one that won the Constructors' Championship that year. I used the Constructors' Championship rather than the Drivers' because for most years it didn't matter, apart from 2021, but the Constructors' is also more of a reference of how fast a car is in general, rather than just a specific driver. Once I had my reference team for that year, I looked at every race they won and worked out how far behind their nearest rival was. That wasn't their teammate. This part's important because I want to know how fast a car is, not the winner. So let's say Lewis Hamilton came in first with Valtteri Bottas in second and Max in third. I want to know how far Max is in the Red Bull behind the winning Mercedes. I want to know what that real gap is. Of course, there are some caveats. The gaps often have reasons. Teams back off at the end of a race. They pit for fastest lap when they know they can't win, especially over the last few years. There's also end of race safety cars that skew the results, but... This isn't meant to be an exact science. It's really just to get a gauge of how quick a car is. So for every race in a season, I took that winning margin, obviously divided it by the amount of races the team won to get an average winning gap over the year. Pretty simple. So this is what I found. Now I wanna be clear, I am not saying that the Red Bull RB19 is the most dominant car based off only two races. In fact, I probably think over the course of the season, it won't even match the Mercedes from 2014. The winning margin so far in 2023 seems really high, but that's because there are only two data points and they've won the first two races easily. I do think that will get lower as we go into the season. And in fact, we'll probably be more in line with the other dominant seasons we've seen from other teams over the years. If we go back to the first hybrid year in 2014, the Mercedes team were on average 23 seconds ahead of their opponents when they won. That's an incredible stat. What's interesting to me, though, is how that winning average slowly reduced over the next five years as teams developed their cars. Last year, in 2022, it looked like we had a really good fight on our hands with Red Bull and Ferrari. And it looked like Ferrari were really going to give Red Bull a good fight for the championship. But as the season went on, Ferrari faltered and Red Bull just got stronger. As a team, Red Bull won 17 races in 2022 pretty much 75% of all races. And on average, when they won, they won by 13.8 seconds. What's more absurd to me though, is the fact that Ferrari actually got pole position in 11 out of those 23 races, but only actually won three of them. Such was the Red Bull's dominance in the race and Ferrari's proneness to make big mistakes. So when Red Bull did win last year, they won on average by 13.8 seconds. And that really isn't all that different to the 2021 season against Mercedes when it went down to the last race. Their winning margin in that season was 13 seconds when they won. The difference being that Mercedes actually took points off Red Bull, but Ferrari, well, they didn't. Just for a little bit more fun here as well, here are some outliers over the years. The Ferrari F2002 and F2004 from 2002 and 2004 respectively, and the McLaren MP44 from 1988. If you want to talk about dominant cars, then here are the ones. The F2002 Ferrari won by an average of almost 20 seconds, but the 1988 McLaren takes the cake, averaging 46 seconds for every win. In fact, in numerous cases, the McLaren cars lapped the entire field, 
and I mean the entire field, with only the two McLarens left being on the lead lap. Utterly dominant and a beautiful car. The truth is that the Red Bull does seem like an absurdly quick car, and it is, but we can't really judge it yet because I'm confident other teams will close the gap as the season goes on. For comparison, in 2014, when Mercedes averaged a winning margin of 23 seconds, they won the first two races 25 seconds ahead of the nearest teams. While they did then go on to blitz that season, other teams did win, and their performance was certainly made more apparent by their engine superiority, something which is fairly even across the board now. Also, the gap that Red Bull have this season in the first two races I think seems worse because Mercedes and Ferrari are in no man's land. And the actual gap between Ferrari and Red Bull seems worse. It seems like Ferrari have got slower. And, well, we know all too well about the troubles of Mercedes. Aston Martin are doing a great job, but they do lack the outright pace of the Red Bull. We also have to remember that this is how the sport has always been. Teams go through points of dominance. It's never really been any different. F1 is as much about the engineers as it is the drivers. And when a team find a loophole or just build a car that is exceptionally fast, well, it may not be great viewing for the fans, but you just have to sit back and applaud it because it's essentially the engineers and the designers who've achieved that. Even Toto Wolff said in an interview, We've had those years where we were as strong, but it's a meritocracy. We shouldn't talk it down because I remember hearing voices like that between 2014 and 2020. What makes the sport so special is that you need to work hard to win and you deserve it. And that is a matter of fact. Even if it is not great for the show that the same guys win all the time, it is because they have done a good job and we haven't. We all hope for good entertainment and it is our duty to catch up and fight these guys. We will do everything in our power to fight back and we will look at areas of weakness that they may have. Entertainment follows sport and that Red Bull's dominance is maybe not good for the commercial side, but it is what makes Formula 1 so special. If Toto can accept it, and it must have pained him to say those words, then we have to too. It'll be interesting to see if this gap does reduce over the course of the season, but Red Bull have just made a fantastic car, and we just have to accept it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.